you know what I've observed over years of working in digital? People hate change. Unfortunately, digital involves constant change and that means that if you're a digital professional, you're gonna be dealing with a lot of resistance along the way. And it's so easy to become immensely frustrated by this, but we really cannot afford to. People are not being intentionally difficult, at least not generally speaking. They've got real concerns because they just don't understand what it is that we're trying to do. They don't understand digital and they don't understand the need for change. And it's our job to help them understand. It's our job to guide them through the process of change. Now that's fairly easy if they're asking us about our reasoning behind a specific recommendation. Most of us have got pretty good at that. But sometimes people throw up more generic objections, objections designed to resist change rather than understand the challenge particularly. Objections that are really stalling tactics or attempts to discredit your recommendations. Now we need to handle these with extreme care. And that can be really hard to do in the heat of a project because it can be just very frustrating. But we can't let our emotions get in the way. And that's why I have a cheat sheet, a cheat sheet that enables me to remain calm and positive and to have an answer for those kinds of generic objections. And in this video, I want to share with you some of the highlights in the hope that it might help you too. We need to do some more research into this. Now, this is a classic stalling tactic. By doing more research, you can avoid action. But my response to this is that we can always do more research. There's always more we can learn, especially with digital, because it's in a constant state of flux. You're never going to have enough research. So sooner or later, you have to decide to act. We need some more data before we proceed any further. When people are asking for data, they're really saying they're afraid. They're afraid that something might go wrong and they want hard data to reassure them that everything's going to be all right to take away the risk but it's impossible to provide enough data. It's imp impossible to provide data that's compelling enough to convince people. And even if you could, people will still reject it saying, you can make numbers say anything. Instead, we need to tackle the fear and to mit mitigate the risk. Instead of asking people to take a huge leap of faith based on some spurious data, ask them to take a series of tiny steps with small consequences to them. You'll quickly find they stop asking about data so much under that kind of circumstance. You just don't understand the circumstances we're faced with. Individual business silos often claim that your recommendations are incompatible with the, their specific circumstances. And to a degree, this is true. You don't understand all their needs. That's why it's so important to do stakeholder interviews. But you need to really listen to what people have got to say when they come back with this objection. Ask them to be specific. Ask them exactly how your recommendations impact the way they work. Often these problems are actually non-existent when you push for the details or there's something that can be easily overcome. But if they have legitimate concerns, then you're gonna to need to do some kind of cost benefit analysis to look at whether the changes you are asking them to complete are actually worth it. That's not how we do things here. Sometimes people will argue that your suggestions aren't in line with the organization, the way that it works, that it's not the right cultural fit. And they may in fact be right about this. In such circumstances, you need to gently show them that it's not your recommendations that are the problem, but the culture. That the culture is the one that's incompatible, incompatible with a changing marketplace, a place where users' needs are different from what they were. That it's not your recommendations that do not fit, but the culture of the organization. That it, if they don't make changes, if they don't embrace cultural change, then they risk becoming irrelevant. You really should have considered some other approaches. There are always other approaches. No number of options will ever be enough. People are just using this argument to slow the process down, not because they would be open to more options or different options. Explain that you've considered many different options and maybe even run through a few with them. But also focus on the reasons for choosing the approach that you have. 
but say you're open to discussing other approaches, if people can come to you with specific recommendations, not just vague statements like we need more options. If they have recommendations, don't dismiss them or criticize them. Don't say, oh yeah, I'd already thought of that. Instead, ask questions. Question them about their approach and highlight potential problem areas through those questions. Get them to think through the consequences of what they're proposing. There should have been more emphasis on whatever. Comments like this aim to discredit your recommendations by proposing that you focused on the wrong thing. In truth, you've only had limited time and resources, so you have had to restrict the scope of the research and recommendations that you've been making. Explain that you had to draw a line somewhere and that that's just the way things were, but then go on to say that if their concerns become a reality, we can tackle them later down the line. You've made too many assumptions. Of course you've made assumptions. Nobody can know everything or understand every nuance of every organisation. But whoever's accusing you of this is making their own assumptions too. Explain that we all bring our own assumptions to any discussion that we have, but that the research that you've done gives you a very broad perspective on the situation and that your background in digital gives you a very relevant perspective on the need for change. This needs more discussion. This is another stalling tactic. You can always discuss things in more depth or with more people, but you have to find a balance, a balance between discussion and moving things forward. Any change involves an element of risk and uncertainty, and more discussion is not going to resolve that problem. In the end, you just need to take action. What's more, there is a greater risk of not making a decision, as you end up alienating users and getting overtaken by the competition. We just can't make that kind of investment. Money can be a legitimate issue, but it can also be an excuse. That's why it's important that you outline the return on investment people can expect from your recommendations. But even that's not going to be enough sometimes. One solution is to compare the expenditure that the organisation is already spending elsewhere with your recommendations. For example, I work with universities who spend millions on physical facilities. Digital facilities cost only a fraction of that, and highlighting this puts things into perspective. You can also highlight the cost of not implementing your recommendations. People tend to think that doing nothing has no cost associated with it, but that's rarely the case. Even if this was a good idea, we don't have the people to do it. A lack of manpower is another legitimate problem, but again, it can be an excuse. Often this comes down to prioritisation more than it does people. You could do the work if you chose to prioritise it over other stuff. But sometimes you are going to have to hire new staff to put in place your recommendations and most management teams don't like that long-term commitment to hiring people. If that's your organisation, then I recommend hiring people on a short-term contract instead. This will never be accepted by whoever. This is a big one. Instead of people rejecting your idea themselves, they'll claim that someone else is going to reject it. Sometimes this can be a sincere belief, but other times it's just a tactic to scupper your idea. Either way, the solution is the same. Speak to whoever it is that's supposedly going to reject your idea. More often than not, the problem then goes away. All of this seems like a lot of work, doesn't it? And I know it can feel frustrating, but the truth is we need the support of others to bring about digital change because these changes are gonna impact their job. They're gonna to need to do things differently. That means convincing people that your recommendations will work. We don't exist in a bubble, and so it's important that part of our job is to bring colleagues along for the ride.